Oh, boogie right. man Ben coming round the band is boogie man Ben. Is boogie man Ben. Greetings, my fellow Fright Fiends, and thanks so much for dropping by the Horror Zone channel. I hope everyone's doing well. Um, today is going to be one of three Friday the 13th related videos that I'm going to be doing. Today's going to be a little bit different. It's not going to be focusing on the movie series, but I want to thank everyone for their comments and suggestions on what I should focus on. And this request comes from Timothy Ben, who has reached out to me a couple times about uh, doing a review of one of the Friday the 13th, the television series uh, episodes. Now, I was a huge fan of this series. Um, this is a collection for season one. I have all three seasons on DVD. Um, this became a pretty big staple of my youth. Um, the, this series premiered when I was 13, and I really got into it in the early part of 1988 when they started rerunning some of the early episodes. Initially, I didn't want to watch it at all because it didn't feature Jason. This dealt with two cousins who inherit their uncle's antique store. He made a pact with the devil, and when he tried to break the pact, uh, he lost his soul. But all of his antiques that were sold, the cousins, along with Jack Marshak, who was a buyer for the antique store, um, are trying to get them back and put them, and put them in the store's vault because they can't be destroyed. Um, but the episode I'm going to talk about today is episode 18 from season 1, and that is the electrocution. A dentist uses a cursed electric chair to seek revenge against those who wronged him. In the cast, you have the series regulars, which is John DeLemay as Ryan Dalian, Louise Roby as Mickey Foster, Chris Wiggins as Jack Marshak, and then you have Angelo Rizakos as Eli Pittman, Frank Adamson as Warden Hobbs, Jay Winston Carroll as Judge Miller, Jennifer Cornish as Melissa Duvall, Ron Hartman as Mr. Downing, Gary Musgrave as Teenage Kid, and Michael Tate as Daniel Kendricks. The episode was written by uh, Rob Hedden, Frank Mancusa Jr., and Larry B. Williams, and it was directed by Rob Hedden. Now, a couple of fun facts. Rob Hedden would actually go on to helm Friday the 13th Part 8, Jason Takes Manhattan, and Angelo Rosakos, who plays Eli Pittman in this was in uh, three episodes throughout the series run and one of them is my absolute favorite so in season one he's in the electrocutioner in season two he was in wax magic and in season three he was in the long road home so yeah this was my guilty pleasure at night when I was a kid you know I was you know 13 about to be 14 when these shows when I really got into these shows and um, I just was really fascinated by the whole concept of them collecting these cursed antiques and putting them in the vault and that's kind of what enticed me to keep watching the show plus I became kind of um, I looked up to, to the, the character of Ryan Dalian played by John DeLemay who was always going to be one of my heroes in the horror genre um, but I liked him because he was a comic book fan and an artist and I was into really uh, into and I was into comic books and things like that and There was just something about him that I was really drawn to um, And uh, this episode was really disturbing to me and I think it's just because uh, the Eli Pittman character You know not only is he um, Condemned to death at the beginning uh, through the electric chair the beginning of it takes place ten years before the episodes main story arc So it takes place in 1978 and he's falsely accused of murdering his girlfriend. He's put to death. He survives and um, is able to acquire the electric chair after it's been cursed by Louis Vondredi um, and uses it as a dentist chair as, at this orphanage where these um, homeless and runaway kids are staying. And he ends up killing several of these kids in order to gain power to go after the people that put him to death. Um, and uh, the scenes where he actually, you know, my, by, by today's standards, the effects, people might look at them and think they look goofy. Um, but they were really disturbing because, again, I was a teenager. These were teenagers that he was killing, and it really bothered um, me. I, I love uh, revenge stories. And this was one where I could actually side kind of with the main villain. You understood why he was doing what he was doing, but the path that he was going to do it was, was really heartbreaking. And I thought the way that this one wrapped itself up was really satisfying. Also, I want to point one thing out, and I don't know if I'm right, but the, the interiors for Warden Hobbs House, which is where the showdown happens at the end of the episode, um, looks like the same interiors for the house from Black Christmas. I know both were shot in Toronto, and I'm always wondering if that was the same location. I've always been curious, but I couldn't find anything to confirm that. But uh, it sure does look like uh, The House from Black Christmas is one of my favorite horror films. So yeah, I really love this episode. Um, it was one of the ones that made me a huge fan of the show um, growing up. Uh, it's one that bothered me. Um, most of these shows, th there were some episodes in the series that we got to me, and this was one of them. And it's always been one that I haven't revisited that much because of some of those scenes that still get me. Rewatching it 
um, even though I've seen it many times, rewatching it for this video, um, those scenes where, where he's killing those kids in the electric chair is still disturbing. Uh, despite some people finding the effects dated, um, it still gets to me and I still remember the impact it had on me as a kid. So yeah, I think this episode is fantastic. I think Angelo Rosakos was one of the greatest um, actors to contribute to the series. Like I said, the three episodes he, he was in were all fantastic. Wax Magic is also a really good one that would be in my top 20. Um, but yeah, this one was fantastic. The cast again shines. Uh, sad that we lost Chris Wiggins, um, but John DeLamay and Roby, Louise Roby, uh, both of them were fantastic as well. Everybody did a great job in this one. Very compelling. And it's kind of one where you're kind of like, you know, there's a conflict because you really kind of understand why uh, the main adversary is doing what he's doing. So yeah, um, I had a blast with this episode. Um, I've always loved it. Um, if I had to give it a rating on my scale, I would give The Electrocutioner from season one to Friday the 13th, the series, four and a half skulls. So yeah, that's going to be it. So first video, first Friday the 13th video uh, for the week, celebrating uh, my favorite uh, horror movie franchise, uh, one of my favorite television series of all time. And like I said, you know, people might look at it now and say it's dated, you know, it's got some corny moments to it, but I, I still think it's great. It holds up for me. But again, you know, I grew up with it. So I have different, I look at it through different eyes than today's generation might. But let me know what you guys think of this. Let me know if you guys are excited for the other two uh, videos I'm going to be doing. One of them will be uh, one of the suggestions that I received from uh, my fellow fiends, people that commented on that video. I really appreciate everybody contributing to that. So uh, thanks so much again for watching. Leave some comments down below on this episode. Let me know if you're a fan of that television series. And I promise you I will talk to you again real soon. Take it easy. Stay scared as always. Fright Fiends, just want to say thank you again for supporting Boogeyman Ben's Horror Zone. If you're brand new to the channel and you haven't yet subscribed, please hit the subscribe button down below. Hit the bell notification so you're updated every time I drop a new video. I typically do this once or twice a week with new content. Uh, I've been doing this for over 11 years and the horror genre is a passion of mine and it really means a lot to me that I can share that passion with all of you guys. Thanks so much again for the support and I'll talk to you again later. Take it easy. Stay scared as always.